What is up YouTube? It's your girl Evelyn and today I want to highlight some upcoming shows and films featuring queer lady characters. So sit back, enjoy the video, and if there are any upcoming shows or films I've missed, please let me know in the comments. Two, one, Rice's Mayfair Witches is AMC's second Anne Rice adaptation, and there are even rumors that it just might outqueer the first one. I've spent years building the life I thought I wanted, but there's something inside of me, something that I can't explain, and I'm afraid. I can't control. The new show is based on Anne Rice's trilogy, Lives of the Mayfair Witches, and tells the story of Rowan Fielding, a neurosurgeon who discovers that she is heir to a family of powerful witches. Unfortunately, a sinister presence has been stalking the Mayfair Witches for generations, so sucks for her. As of the making of this video, it hasn't been revealed which characters are queer, but the showrunner, Estes Balding, has confirmed that Mayfair Witches will be super queer and inclusive, and I for one cannot wait. You can watch the first episode of Anne Rice's Mayfair Witches January 8th on AMC. My girl Mindy Kaling is back at it again because apparently having two currently airing hit TV shows isn't enough and she's going for a third. Velma is a sexy, profanity-laced, and gory adult animated show that tells the origin story of everyone's favorite and gayest member of Mystery Inc., Velma Dinkley. Who is this? That's the mystery and solve it quick because I'm in your house. A serial killer calling from inside my house? Yes, that's a classic, and that's my point. Why change anything when the classics all still work, right? Even though Velma has yet to air, it's been swimming in controversy for months. The show's been raked over the coals on Twitter for its race swapping of Velma and Shaggy, its potential queer baiting, and of course, its lack of Scooby-Doo. Now, I typically don't defend movies or TV shows I haven't watched yet, but I think some of the critiques are a tad disingenuous, like the race swapping, which, let's be honest, is a very weird thing to get angry about. And by weird, I do in fact mean racist. I do admit to having sympathy for the Scooby-Doo lovers, who are looking forward to seeing Scooby in the new show. Apparently, the show, or HBO, or whoever, weren't allowed to use Scooby-Doo due to studio restrictions. And finally, there's the allegations of queerbaiting. Long story short, the official Velma Twitter account tweeted that Velma has a crush on Fred, who is a boy. And people got very upset about this potential erasure of Velma's lesbian identity. Now, as far as I know, the show has not officially defined Velma's sexuality, but it did state that Daphne has quote unquote, complicated feelings for Velma. It's also worth noting that Daphne has two moms who happen to be voiced by Wanda Sykes and Jane Lynch. Two of the funniest lesbians on the planet. Like I mentioned before, I have not watched Velma. So I could be wrong. But if Velma is indeed an origin story, that likely means she's coming into her own, discovering new things about herself, and perhaps figuring out her sexuality is a part of that journey. I say, at the very least, let's give the show a chance before pulling out the proverbial pitchforks. You can catch the premiere of Velma January 12th on HBO Max. <laughs> The Last of Us just might be the most anticipated television show of 2023, and its main character, Ellie, just so happens to be a lesbian. Now, I don't mean to get all weepy on you guys, but that's f***ing amazing. You haven't seen the world, so you don't know. You keep going for family. I'm not family. No, you're cargo. The Last of Us is an adaptation of one of the most beloved and critically acclaimed video games of the past decade, and it tells the tale of a post-apocalyptic world ravaged by a fungal infection that transforms people into zombie-like creatures. My guy Joel is a smuggler who's hired to escort Ellie, a teenager immune to the infection, across the US in the hopes that she is the key to creating a vaccine. Like I said before, Ellie is definitely a lesbian in the games, and I don't want to say much else 
says not to spoil the plot. But let's just say if the adaptation stays even slightly true to the game, there will 1000% be a sapphic romance on this show. Also, as a Game of Thrones head, I am obligated to mention that Ellie is being played by the baddest bitch in all the Seven Kingdoms, Leanna Mormont, aka my girl Bella Ramsey. You can catch the premiere of The Last of Us January 15th on HBO Max. Also, be sure to check out the pinned comment on this video for even more returning shows that may feature queer lady characters, like The Legend of Vox Machina and The Owl House. Sleep With Me is a Filipino drama about two women who fall in love. Harry is a sweet and bubbly wheelchair user who hosts a late night radio show, while Luna is an aloof, socially awkward science textbook writer with a medical condition that doesn't allow her to sleep at night. Basically, the two meet, some minor sparks fly, and we then get a front row seat to their fledgling romance, how they navigate their respective conditions, and how society sees and treats them. For example, Harry is often infantilized as well as idolized for merely existing as a disabled person, while Luna, whose disability is invisible, is frequently not taken seriously or given help when she needs it. Now, granted, I've only watched the first episode, which is currently available on YouTube, but I'm already impressed by this show. I think it's super cute and sweet and potentially really eye-opening. Now, if you live in the US, there's a few different ways to watch Sleep With Me, but it seems like the easiest is to go through Gaga Ooh La La, which is an LGBT BTQ plus Taiwanese streaming platform that I actually covered in my best lesbian streamers video if you want to know more. And for those of you who've already watched Sleep With Me, please let me know in the comments what you thought and whether or not the show lives up to its first episode. Leopard Skin is a sexy thriller about a group of people held hostage by diamond thieves in a mansion on a remote Mexican beach. That's, that's a lot. All I know about this show is that apparently it's incredibly weird and difficult to follow. There's some kind of sapphic activity. There's lots of naked women in it. And one of them happens to be Carla Gugino. It's my baby mama. Now I've yet to be wooed enough by Peacock's programming to pay them anything. So if you've watched Leopard Skin, feel free to drop a review in the comments. This next film is for my 80s and 90s babies because as a child growing up in the 90s, I was absolutely obsessed with psychic hotline infomercials and the undisputed queen of psychic hotline infomercials was Miss Cleo. I loved every second of HBO's Call Me Miss Cleo, a documentary about the rise and fall of 90s TV psychic Miss Cleo. Prior to watching the documentary, I'd only heard bits and pieces of Miss Cleo's story, like that she was faking her Jamaican accent and that she was a lesbian, but I had no idea how strange and tragic and compelling her life story was. So if you were a 90s kid obsessed with psychic hotlines, I can't recommend this documentary enough. Based on a novel of the same name, The Confessions of Franny Langton is a period drama that tells the tragic story of a former slave who falls in love with her mistress and is then accused of her murder. The novel has been critically acclaimed and the reviews for the series so far seem to be relatively positive. In fact, the author of the novel, Sarah Collins, actually produced and adapted the series herself. The Confessions of Franny Langton is currently streaming on ITVX, a British streaming service, which makes watching it in the US a little tricky. I'll link to a website in the description that breaks down step-by-step -step how to watch ITVX if you're in the US. The Australian teen coming of age drama Flunk is back with its third season. And if you've never heard of Flunk, it's a soapy show about teens, but more importantly, it's a soapy show for teens, which is refreshing because so many shows about teens tend to cater to a much older demographic. So if you're a teen on the hunt for a relatable show meant to entice you and not your mom, you might wanna check out the third season of Flunk, which is available in its entirety on Vimeo or per episode on YouTube. That that is it for the video. I want to give a quick shout out to my newest patron, Lisa. I also have to shout out my big spender patrons, Angel, Citizen Ruth, Mary, Angie, JC, and Lucia. Also, just a quick reminder that every single week, I release a silly little L word Gen Q podcast over on my Patreon. I've also been recapping the Stupid Wife Christmas special as well. As always, thank you so much for watching and make sure to let me know which upcoming shows and films you're most looking forward to this month and I'll see you in the next one.